So people keep asking me about the Akai Professional MPC series as well as the four since they were released and the ability support was announced. And now today I can announce the availability of Bitwig support as well as Reaper support. So many, many thanks to Akai Professional for providing me with these nice devices, Live 2 here, uh, MPC1 and a force. But there's also further support I provide. It's also the Live 1, which is supported and as well the MPC X. The MPC X, I don't have that for testing, so not all of its additional buttons are supported, but at least you have the same feature set as with the one and with the live. And if you have one, just get in touch with me and maybe we can figure out the rest which is missing. So how do you need to get started? So simply refer to the manual of the Akai MPC or 4 series, which tells you what you need to do to get prepared for Ableton support. So first install the driver for your network. So this works via either the network cable, which I attached here, or you can also use Wi-Fi on a Live 2 on a 4. So MPC does not have Wi-Fi, so here you need to have the cable. And nevertheless, cable is always better. So go with the Ethernet cable if you can connect that uh, to your PC or your Mac. Yeah, talking PC or Mac, this requires the specific drive, which you need to download from the Akai Professional website and install to run this software. And this driver is sadly not available for Linux. So sorry, folks, it's only for Mac OS and for Windows. And also Mac OS currently only the Intel version is supported. But Akai Professional, they told me that the ARM version is also upcoming and there should be a driver in a hopefully not too far future as well. If you have installed the driver and connected the stuff to your network, you need to start this little tool which comes with it, which is called the Akai Professional Network MIDI Control Panel. So the longest application name I ever read, I think. And I also noticed it has a funny bug here on Windows because it does not show you any labels at all, which luckily is not necessary because it helps you only to select your connected device. So if you have connected multiple devices like I have here, you need to select one. So you can run only one device for controlling Bitwig. So that's uh, the application is good for. So you need to choose. I have here now the force connected as well as a live Mark II. That's why they're showing up. So you can also switch on the fly between the two devices. You can see that if you open up here the, let's go here to the JavaScript console. So you see here the MPC Live 2 and it says I'm connected here to either Live 2 or 1 because they cannot be distincted. But if I switch now with the little tool here to selecting the force then you will see in a second that we are disconnected from the life but now I need to enter here the control mode. I will show you that in more detail later on. So I see now I'm connected now to the force so you can switch it on the fly in case you have multiple devices here like I have. The usability or the functions you have here in the displays are exactly the same. And also the hardware knobs and buttons on the MPCs are identical, except that the knobs here shuffle in funny ways and are in different areas. But what you can do are exactly the same. So I would start with explaining what you can do with a touch display, which is uh, identical on all three devices, and then get into the details of the different knobs and buttons. So let's get started started with the MPC Live 2 first. So here we are on the screen of the MPC Live 2 and the screen has different areas. So we have the transport bar here on the top and the transport bar has three variations. Sadly, none of the variation contains all control elements, but nevertheless, they are adjusted to give a different workflow. So there is one called session, there's one called arrangement and one is performance. So session contains the most of the elements, which is if you start here in the beginning, you can change the tempo of your song. And there are different ways which you can change the tempo. So you can use the big knob to change it in big steps. And if you combine it with the shift, you can change it in small ones. And you can also change it by double tapping and then you can go plus or minus or enter 
enter also a number here and say do it and then you have also changed the BPM. Also the nudge which is not available in Bitwig so I also use that that you can have here go down and uh, go up. I hope you can see that here on the video. That's for setting here your tempo. Next one you can change here your metronome. Here you can change that it follows here your playback which is, let's close that one here, which is that knob here. So it scrolls with the playback and what else we have next one is here the transport position so you can also scroll here your transport position and you can also go in small steps if you do shift uh, like this next one here is for overdub and this is a ranger overdub and i did also that you can also use shift here with the overdub so you can change your clip overdub as well not only the ranger overdub same is for right so this is automation right and you can also change automation right for the clip if you do it uh, like this there is also something else here in the setting you can set the quantizations if you want to quantize a clip you can set here the resolution but this cannot be directly translated to bitwig because it cannot be set like that in the api so what i did is to map this uh, to a percentage so from 30 percent up to 100 percent of quantization you can see that also in the settings so if you go into the settings for the controller you see you have here 100 percent of quantize amount and if you change that it will go down so the smallest value here is also 30 percent and then you can go up to 100 percent of quantization of your clip next one here is also another setting where you can set your launch quantization this does also not map 100 percent but at least the not t numbers do work so if you look here in the play start you see it's only normal numbers for selecting you need to click so for example you can select four bars or you can also directly select it from here also with the big knob and then it will change here in the window as well for your launch quantization then in the lower part you have three different views so the first one is your clip view the next one is for mixing and the third one is for editing your plugins so let's start with the first one so this is your clip grid so you can for example like on a push controller or launch pad you can start your clips you can also start recording so the usual stuff you can also start your scenes here and you can also give the scenes colors for example if you want to do that and you will also see the colors then here in uh, for example let's make the first one here uh, let's make the first one here orange and then you can also color the scenes as well so the usual stuff you can also have button combinations so you can use the erase button or delete button no the erase button it's called here with scenes and clips to delete them for example uh, let's press the erase button and delete some scenes so you see they will be deleted also you can delete clips and also so undo should be working fine so we can undo that as well but let's stay in a touch display again for a second what you else can do in all the three views is that you can select here the different tracks to select them and you can also at the bottom you can stop the playback of that for example let's play back that so you can stop the playback of the clip here in that area and you can also stop all clips here with that one so everything stops then in but the playback should continue yes it does what else do we have we had scenes we had the button combinations we have some functions here at the bottom we have the quantize knob so you can quantize your midi clip the selected clip you can also delete the selected clip and you can insert a new scene as well let's go with that so you can insert several new scenes and this normally with ableton it just uh, replicates the record button which i found pretty boring so the record button here creates a new clip on the crit what i always do with this new button basically that is it creates a media clip it starts looping it and activates override so you can play something into that media clip so that's basically what we here have here in the first view in the second view you can mix so maybe let's start some playback here in the arranger so we can hear something so let's start back and you see then here uh, the playback as well nice animation you see also the maximum values that happened and you can touch it 
and change the volume of a track here. You can also double click it here to get a more detailed view for touching as well. The same works also here on the second view. So we have multiple views now. You have also main, which gives you more options. So the fader is now shorter. You can do the same thing as in the main big view. But here you have additional options, like for example, you can mute a track and you can solo the track as well. And for tracks where it's possible to record, you can toggle here the record state as well. You still have the selection is like that on the top and you also have here the stop clip here at the bottom. Let's move on to the third one. So the third one gives you your sense. So we have now currently two cents. You can only have up to four cents. So that's sadly the maximum. You cannot control more than four cents but nevertheless you have four cents and here you can also change here your sense of your track and if you want to have more fine grain control you can also double tap it and get this big knob here on the screen which is a little bit easier to navigate than the small one or alternatively you can also use here uh, the knob to control it you can select here if you use a crossfader you can select to which output this channel will go to a or to b or here to the normal output as well so moving on to the third one. So the third one is for editing devices. So we need to go somewhere where is a device. Uh, okay, here is one device, so delay, so you get all the parameters. You can move if you have several devices on your track, which I don't have here. Yeah, you can go to the next or the previous device and you can also go through the different pages of this device. So you also see the name here of that current bank and you can move the values. You can also switch it with a knob or you could double tap it again to have a big slider for that. And you can also toggle the, the on state of the device here at the bottom so you can turn it off and on again. So much for devices. That's what you can do here in the touch display. And as I said, it's the same for the archive force as well. And for all NPCs, it's the same usability. So let's zoom out a bit and look at the other controls of the device. So there are still some uh, hardware buttons to visit as well. So I already used here with the display the big knob as well. Sadly, the Q buttons do not work. I don't know why. In a manual of Ableton, it says that they should work, but also with Ableton, they do not work. So I guess that's a basic problem. I asked Akai, okay, but I'm still waiting for an answer. So maybe that's just a, just a bug or I, I'm not sure. But currently uh, they are empty or I'm missing something, which could also be the, the case, but they seem to be here empty. But I hope that's something that we can fix somehow. Or maybe you can help me. So write me down below in the comments if if you have an idea what's the issue with the knobs here. Okay, but the transport is working nicely, so you can start playback here, you can do stop. Also, if you press it again, you can go back to the beginning, or if you press it again, double click, you can go to the end of the project, so different options here. You can also start playback from the beginning, you have the overdub of the arranger, and you can also combine that with shift to have overdub of the clip. You have the normal recording, and you can also toggle overdub again here with shift with that record button. The upper uh, buttons cannot be used because they will bring you back to the normal standalone mode. So you can only use the lower ones, the shift button, as well as a tap. So here you can tap your tempo and change your tempo. Here you can also, if you use it with shift, you can toggle the metronome as well, which might be more handy in a live situation than uh, doing that on the display. Then we have also some buttons here on the top. So you have here the bank A to D, but the bank A to D will control now your clip. So these replace the missing cursor keys here on a device. So you can go here, uh, with that one, you go left, right. So you via the tracks. And this is also interesting to note that you have this 4.4 square, which is showed here. So you go so until you reach the end, you move in this 8.8 .8 square and which behaves a little bit different on the force. That's why I'm uh, mentioning that. And if you are at the end, you move to the next page. Same is here true for the scene. So you can also go down to the scenes, but we only have, oh, we have more here and you go and go up again. So uh, this can also be started here. So the 
pads are only for starting clips or scenes in the control mode. You cannot play devices in between that. For example, there's a workaround for that, but I will do an extra video about that, how you can integrate the hardware into your workflow with Bitwig as well. But so far in the control mode, you use the pads for starting clips or for starting scenes. So currently we're in clip mode. So you see here we have the three red ones, the blue ones. So you can just touch it and start that as well. And with the 16 level button, you can switch to scenes. So now you see the scenes, you see here the orange one, and here you can start then the scene through that one. I was a little bit lazy because I also found that confusing if you would have 16 scenes here because here you see only 8 scenes and this would be really difficult to synchronize it and I think also highly confusing so you have 8 scenes as well especially <laughs> exactly those who are also shown here in a display so you can start them as well but you can navigate here down so you can also, uh, with that one, you can also see the other, so the other four scenes we have here as well and start them. So this was the upper row, the lower row, I already used the 16th one for toggling here between clips, the Trurax, so let's go up again. Um, and then we have some more, we have one for toggling your device, or if you have a device of a window, I think that's pretty handy for toggle that as well. And there is a function with shift as well, so you can switch between the clip arrange view and the mixer view with shift and note repeat button. Next one full level toggles the right mode also and with shift you can also toggle the right mode which might be also more handy in live situation. You can delete a, a clip so let's go here and with undo you can undo that and you can do the same with scene so if you switch to the scene view you can also say I want uh, to delete erase that scene and you can also get rid of that by doing that. So this is the undo button uh, which undoes all that and with shift you can redo uh, also your last action and one button is missing which is the copy button so the copy button can also be used for copying so for example you can duplicate a scene which you would need to scroll down now to see that or you can also if you go here use it to copy a clip as well so also pretty handy so the other buttons two buttons cannot be used they are not available in the control mode so i think i covered everything here with the MPC series. Uh, I think quite a lot of stuff. And now let's switch over to the force and see what it can do. So here we are on a force now. As you see, the display looks a little bit different, but the features are identical and exactly the same. And what I forgot to mention is how you actually enter the mode. So if you go to menu, there is a live control on the MPC. It's only called control, so pretty easy to find. And if you go there, you're in the same mode. So same features as here. What is different is that the buttons are in completely different places. So play is up there, stop is up there, record is up there as well. Uh, undo is also here. What is new and not available on the MPC is that you have also a load button here and you have a save button as well. But the light is not working because it's this is not supported in the Ableton version. That's I guess that's the reason why the light is not working. So you need to navigate it blind, but I guess load and save can be easily found as well. These buttons are hardwired here to uh, the functionality here. So you have the mixer and the clip uh, goes to the device and the matrix goes to the matrix. So you don't have to use a touch display. You can also switch it here with the hardware buttons. The navigation is currently no function. This one are the cursor keys, which we had the bank A to D on the uh, live. So you can also use that for finding your way around here in this matrix. And you can also use that with shift to go in full pages. So that's the upper right part here. Below that, there are the knobs. So these knobs now do work uh, because they are not Q knobs, they are specific to the force. And you can use it to change your track volume. So you see it better if you go here, we can change the track volume here as well. Or you can toggle with that knobs button to controlling the devices. So we need to go somewhere where there is a device here, the device. So you will see the parameters of the device also below here. And you can also use that uh, to change the value, not only the touch display. 
Then we have uh, some buttons which don't have a function. Uh, we have here some additional combination keys, select, copy, and delete, which we also had on MBCs. Uh, no, we did not have the select, but we had the copy and delete, which I already showed. And you can also use them uh, in combination with clips, with scenes, or with tracks, which are here. So below here, you can also use these row to select uh, the tracks, not only in the touch display, but now also in the hardware. And here we have now the full 8.8 .8 grid, so we don't have this square here in the screen for the navigation. You can also start here the scenes from the hardware with the buttons. This is also working nicely. What else do we have? Yeah, uh, select is now also available for just selecting a clip for editing uh, without starting its playback. You have tap tempo, which I showed already on MPC. That row can be used for these four functions, so for stopping clips, for changing the record enablement or for soloing a track. And you can also, this is nice that you can use it like this. So you can, for example, mute, which is a fourth function, mute the whole stuff here with a slide. That's something I like. Okay, so much for that side. What you will miss here, we have here stop all. So the same as I press here, stopping all the playback clips. And there is also a button to go to the master track. And if you press it again, you go back to your previous track. So what we miss is here the upper area. Um, so we have here a sign A, B. So that's what we showed here in that area here with the sense. You could select either A or B. And this is now something something also available. So if you keep A pressed, you will see the state here below. So you can say, I want this channel go to A and you see it also uh, showing up here. You can also use both of that. And you can do the same for B. So here you can go B instead of A. And you also have a crossfader so you can actually crossfade between the A and B channels. So this is visible here in Bitwig, so you will see here your crossfader here in the lower area, and you can also then here see that it's working as well. Woo, this was a long video, and uh, I hope you will dig this really and look into that. You can also come up with other ideas for it, but I can already tell you it's not that I would program the display or anything. It's just, uh, not just, but it's a protocol. So it's pretty fixed what you can do. There might be some options here on the, that one because we have some buttons left. So if you miss a function here, we have some options, but the MPC is pretty uh, like it is. But as I said, there are some workarounds and I will show you these workarounds, how you can integrate the hardware and use it also as an external synthesizer and how you integrate that in Bitwig in a separate video because that one is, I guess, one of my longest videos I ever did. And I really hope you like this, dig it, and make some funky music. <laughs>